Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. I hope like YouTube is a Madden fan 18 tip video. I got a defensive tip video today. I'm trying to put these type of tip videos out really early because I know people. Uh, last year maybe it took me a little while, but I know people really uh, want help with some of the things that change in this game. So what this video is all about is how to become a better user, it's more specifically in the passing game, a user middle linebacker, user defender, uh, because essentially, you know, I, I don't want the video to be too long. If you guys want to see user run defense tips, hit the like button and I'll do that next. But for now, I really think uh, pass defense is probably a bigger concern for people, especially being a user middle linebacker. A lot of people struggle with that. Uh, if you watch my video long enough, you know that I don't. Uh, defense is typically the strong suit in my game. Uh, I, I pretty much live and die on that. Uh, it's my bread and butter. So I'm going to try to pass you off as many tips as I can in a way that you would understand it um, on how to be a good user middle linebacker and what you should be looking at, what you should be doing, uh, stuff like that. So first of all, um, you know, we got the, the menus up here. Real simple. You just want to match personnel this year. This is more of a run defense tip, but it's also a pass defense tip because they're essentially telling you that if somebody comes out in a three wide set, and you come out in a three line, let's come like a four three or something, your linebacker is gonna to get toasted by that third receiver. So you just have to match sets. Now, I specifically chose this play for a reason. I'm pulling up my, uh, you know, I just chose random on my side, but it really doesn't matter. So I wanted to choose something where I would have a, uh, a tight end on one side, a receiver on another. And a second here, I'll um, you know, this is the diagram. It looks like a blitz. It really doesn't matter what play you're running. This guy here, because he's covering the center, would typically be the guy that I would use her because you want to always be in the center. The, the shortest pass is the easiest to complete, and it's what your opponent's always looking for. So you have to make sure you take away the shortest pass. You, what's the, the saying? The, the closest or the shortest distance between two points is a straight line? Something kind of like that. Essentially, um, you want to take away whatever's the uh, the shortest option for the quarterback first because the longer that the ball is in the air the better that's when you know things like recovery speed come into effect which you always want to make sure your, your guys on the back side have good recovery speed but you essentially want them to throw the ball deep and I know some people might be nervous at the sound of that but you typically want uh, your opponent to chuck up the ball because that's the easiest way to defend it if you really want to know the truth about it the longer it's in the air the more of a chance you have to get to it but like I said that's that's something you guys might have to work on you might have to be better at using the ball but for now let's just focus on this um, essentially uh, you know, you have a tight end on one side, a receiver on another. This setup is no good. You don't want to ever be by yourself in the middle. Um, that's that's no good. You just too much space for you to cover. I don't care how good you are. If they're both crossing, you're screwed. If, if Witten and Beasley are crossing against each other, you can't cover everything. So what you need to do on pretty much every play is never cover the middle by yourself. In this scenario, you got a couple different options. I would typically say Curry here is in perfect position to be my partner. Now, if I don't want him to be my partner, say I want um, Cox here, like, you know, if he was a better athlete, I'd say he'd be a better partner. Um, but basically, one of these guys is essentially the guy that I need to be helping me out. It's not an ego thing that, hey, I can cover it by myself. You need a shorter space so that you can work. So here in this scenario, if, if this is what my setup looks like, Fletcher Cox right here is going to drop right into where Witten is. So I know that my read is covering this other guy off the line of scrimmage. You know what I'm saying? He, the, if, and if, if for whatever reason, I mean, I might start in here a little bit because essentially, if I start right around here, if Beasley goes outside, he's running into the seam flat. If he comes inside, he's running into me. If I come out here too far and Witten does a slant, the, the center's wide open. So you really got to kind of line up in between so that if you, you know, the second you see the play start, you know what's going on. If Witten comes slanting in, you got to jump it. You got to jump in front of it, cut it off be in that area even if you don't jump it as far as a pick you got to jump it and basically run into Witten to the point where you might drop the ball with a hit or something like that or you know contact makes him drop the ball so that's the best way pre-snap let's go ahead and let's run this back the way that it was so now let's say uh, Curry here is my partner and Jenkins is still my user which it doesn't have to be you know I mean you, you could always you know if Jenkins isn't the middle linebacker, like say this guy's the middle linebacker, it really doesn't matter, but you just have to be controlling the middle, whatever the position is. So basically, let's say that I decide a better option is Curry standing up, which it is because Fletcher Cox is going to be too slow. Uh, I'm still covering this middle. Now, obviously, Beasley, if he goes straight, he's going to be dropping into where Beasley's going. And uh, so Witten's kind of my, my pre-snap read. i got to be in his area. 
once again, if Witten goes outside, I know where my help is. You know what I'm saying? If Witten does an outside slant, he's going into the seam flats. If he comes in, he's coming into me. You just basically have to know where your help is at all times. That's one of the most important things, the covering and zone and pass. And this year, I really think that man coverage is making a huge comeback. But for zone coverages, and no, there's no man coverage. There's no, there's no play in the game that's a good idea to run straight man. You're always mixing man and zone, so you still have to know where your zone help is. Uh, but in, in zones in particular, which is still the heavy defense that I run this year, uh, I'll, I'll mix in some man, but uh, you really just have to know where your help is. That's one of the biggest things. All right, so I went and went into an uh, instant replay here. I, I'm pretty sure I'm covering is this guy right here. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about as far as taking away the shortest option first and passing off to corresponding zone. Now, right at the gate, um, you know, this is my area. I'm cutting. I'm getting right in between where the uh, receiver and the quarterback is, the direct line of sight between the quarterback and the receiver. I'm, I'm in perfect position to jump that. Now, I'm a little bit short, so if he pass leads it up, which is fine. Like I said, I want to cover short. You know what I mean? I, I probably should be a little bit deeper, maybe like a yard. But ultimately, um, if he throws it up, like I said, if he wants to float it, the longer the ball is in the air, the more chance I have for guys like this guy and guys like this guy to come in there and either get a pick or get a deflection, whatever. So I want that. But I basically, as the play starts, I'm cutting off the first lane. Now, as he goes back further, and I recognize 83 coming down, uh, coming into my area, which I know is my next read, I'm going to let him go because I know that he's going to get covered by the other two guys. Like I said, you always want to cover short first. You know what I'm saying? The, the basically, I mean, he's already throwing the ball in the animation, but uh, basically my area is covered perfectly because you always want to take the short route as I'm dropping down to basically, I would have cut that off. If you were throwing it right there, that would have been mine. I either would have hit stick the guy or it would have been my opportunity to jump the route. Now, you also notice I didn't flip my hips. That's important, and I'll go over that in a minute. I never turn direction. I'm dropping back in a strafe, and when I see it, I sprint forward. You never want to change direction, or at least you don't want to change direction. Um, you want to limit that as much as possible because that, that takes away all your speed uh, if you don't have a, a high acceleration, high agility linebacker, which most linebackers are not. But basically, like I said, you got to cover short. The longer the ball's in the air, the better it is for you. And, uh, you know, I just drop down. And I uh, take that away. I mean, that's exactly how you want to do it. That's exactly how you want to patrol your area. Cutting off a lane, and then you react, cut off the next lane. He went outside, which is fine. He only got a couple yards, but it is what it is. That's not my zone. There's nothing I can do about that, personally, anyway, aside from pre-snap adjustments. The next thing I want to talk about is watching your opponent, essentially the quarterback. You always have to be watching the quarterback. Even if it's not your job specifically to go after the quarterback, you're covering, you know, a linebacker, or you're cover you say you're a linebacker covering a tight end. It doesn't matter. You the play is dictated by the quarterback, so you have to be watching him. Here I sent a blitz. Uh, just so I could get him, the, the computer quarterback to move and essentially he does now the second I see him moving I have to react to a the direction he's going in Because typically this is me over here Typically the direction the quarterback goes is where the ball is going to go because if he's rolling out to the right And he's going to chuck it across the field across his body first of all It's going to be inaccurate. It's probably going to go out of bounds um, And the longer it's in the air once again the more it benefits me as a defender so essentially I see him rolling right I got to cover the guys to the right and the guy in my zone going to the right is uh, I think it's Cole Beasley there So I essentially go back to cut that off and I'm watching that pressure the second I see the quarterback's got pressure and he's taken off I have to take I have to basically read and react to whatever it is in my area That's the shortest and I have to commit to it. It's no longer me playing a zone against multiple people It's he's about to get sacked. I have to take away this this uh, one guy that he could throw to and that's Cole Beasley So you see me over there um, cutting off that route. He can't throw there. And what I could have did here, if I didn't have two guys trailing, one of them fell down. If I didn't have two guys trailing, I probably would have hit right click and sent this guy here. If you guys don't know, the uh, the right click button will send the closest zone and cut that off. Uh, but I didn't do that because I was really just trying to show a point. Uh, you basically have to commit to uh, the guy, basically going either going in the direction of the quarterback or closest to the quarterback, because that's going to be the easiest throw. It's not often that a running quarterback is going to make a strike downfield or in the opposite direction of the field or something like that. That's a low percentage pass. And then last but not least, I just wanted to make a mistake and show you guys how you do not cover. As a, as a user middle linebacker, and then I'll show you the right way to cover. Uh, you don't want to change directions. Almost ever you want to change directions, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, especially going left to right. You have to strafe. The strafing is important. So here, I did this on purpose. I ran, I sprinted to one side, then I turned around. Look at how slow I turned. 
You know what I mean? Look how easily it is to get beat. You are way out of the play, and my guy's going to get beat. So if you're flipping your hips as a linebacker, that is a huge mistake. You don't want to do that in pretty much any scenario. There are scenarios where you're going to want to turn and run with the receiver you're covering, but in a scenario like this, when you have a guy coming across your face, you, you, you can't do this. You can't flip your hips. You just lose everything. And this is a good, this is a good athletic linebacker. This is Michael Kendricks. He's one of the top speed linebackers in the game. So, you know, that just goes to show. So now I'm going to show you what you should do. All right, so this is me again. This is, I'm covering a play. I don't even know the name. It was called like the stick and nod. But there's three tight ends. It's really hard to decide which one's mine um, until the play snaps. So what I do here is I'm dropping back. Uh, I'm starting off going over by 82 because I'm thinking I got help on this side, which is uh, essentially my, my other linebacker. But you see how he essentially has to react to, to a drag route coming across. So he's not a linebacker. He's a cornerback. He has to react to that. It basically takes him out of the play. Oh, wow. All right, so here's a play. I just chose a random play, Cowboys. It's like a three tight end set, where essentially I'm the middle linebacker, and I don't even know who is my job, uh, because I, uh, you would think um, that these middle linebacker routes are going to be, or these middle tight end routes are going to be covered by my outside linebackers. And as the play starts off, they are. Uh, it's I have a cover two, uh, 33 here is covering Witten pretty good. I drop in his area because it's it's the strong side. There's there's two tight ends on that side, so I'm thinking that's the side that's going to need help. But as I'm dropping back, I'm realizing that my coverage on the other side, 84, is getting shaky so i know that i'm out of position and i basically without flipping my hips you see here i didn't i didn't flip my hips i never turned i never lost acceleration i just sprinted in that direction and cut off that route but i never flipped my hips to the point where i lost all my acceleration like i did on the previous play i i i, I essentially caught up by doing this and you see he was totally covered nothing's going on there and the reason i thought he was covered you can see Jalen mills actually has to react to what looks like a drag coming down and now nobody's really in position for 84. so i flip my hips i never lose acceleration and then i round off i i once i see that he's covered i see the ball going in the air in this direction it goes to somebody else but i see it going in the air so i i round off and go towards the other tight end thinking it might be them but i never flip my hips i never lose acceleration that's the way you got to do it yeah anticipation is key you really have to anticipate uh, you know the, the upcoming receiver routes if you see some you have to see somebody coming like a mile away And that's important. I didn't mention that but that's the end of the video uh, If you guys want to see more defensive tips like how to stop the run anything like that Let me know in the comment section or hit the like button and I'll keep doing the videos that I'm coming up with uh, Which I'm which are doing pretty good. I mean you guys seem to like them. So uh, I'm gonna keep doing that other than that. Thanks for watching man money shit out